All right, guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. I'm so excited to have today's guest. I have Lisa with me. She is a long-term carnivore, and we're going to talk about food addiction and whatever else comes up. But Lisa, go ahead and introduce everyone um, to you. Okay, well, so I'm not sure um, how much people know or don't know about me. I'm Dr. Lisa Wiedemann. I've been an optometric physician for 30 years. I've been carnivore for 11 and a half years now, um, way back before carnivore was really a thing. <laughs> and um, I, I, my, my background, because I always say that everybody has their why. Why, why did they get here? How did they get here? And um, what are they looking to achieve? Because nobody just kind of glances across somebody doing this crazy, what I call flying your freak flag diet and jumps in because they think maybe it's healthy. I mean, there's always something. And for me, I just struggled with really a, a lifetime of sugar and carb addiction. And um, it was such a struggle and I just couldn't figure out how to get out of it. Um, and I, you know, I bounced around from long ago trying Atkins and then, um, I, I happened to buy upon a, a friend who recommended the Schwartzbein Principle book, and then uh, Paleolithic. Um, but I just found that uh, shifting to, you know, Schwartzbein Principle is basically eliminating um, flour and sugar. So that was a tremendous uh, light bulb moment and eye opening. But I, I just found that it still wasn't the end game because I still had issues and I would still fall back and not really understanding at the time the truly addictive nature of sugar as an actual drug. And I mean, sometimes I say that to people and they look at me like I'm absolutely crazy. Of course, this is like on, you know, restaurant tables and in every home and eaten every day and in ketchup and it's in everything. How could that possibly be a drug? But I say, well, I guess you can liken it to um, alcohol where some people just cannot control themselves around it. And that substance, that drug, um, triggers an uncontrollable, um, you know, insatiable uh, kind of draw to it. And uh, I, I think it's very similar with, with sugar and processed foods that some people can, you know, order a cheesecake for dessert at a nice restaurant and eat half of it and say, oh, that fulfilled my sweet tooth. And that would never happen for me. Yeah. I mean, there's no such thing as eating half a cupcake or a few bites of cheesecake. I mean, I'd eat mine and then look around and see, wow, they left half of theirs. How could they do? I start, you know, looking and analyzing like what what's wrong with this picture. Um, so, and then with Paleolithic, I thought, well, wow, this seems to make a lot of sense. I always like to try to go back to this ancestral man thought process of we were put on earth and we're, we're here and we're given the ability to sustain ourselves. And you would think optimally, nutritionally, that would be our innate drive. Um, so Paleolithic kind of made sense. You know, it, basically if you're out on a prairie with a sharp stick, um, so you could, um, you know, hunt animals, obviously. You could um, eat fruit because that's obviously edible. You would not eat potatoes because they're not really edible raw or corn or grains. Um, so, you know, that eliminated all that sort of, you know, bad starchy carb stuff. But I soon figured out that I could be cleaning a, like a quart container of strawberries for my kids and every other one went in my mouth, you know, one in the bowl, one in my mouth. And that dried apricots were like friggin' oh gosh. cocaine candy and also nuts. I mean, there's certain things that for me, and I, I guess everybody's different with their triggers, but you know, I, you, I really can't sit in front of a bowl of mixed nuts with macadamias and almonds and cashews and even dry roasted peanuts. It's like, it, it literally is just screaming at me to eat it. And it was also, you know, um, a green light on Paleolithic, you know? And so again, I still, um, I still struggled. As, as wonderful as Paleolithic um, is for many people. Um, and, and then I actually did not hit the keto um, world because I was really fortunate that I came upon, I was just, you know, diligently still looking on the internet and came upon Charles Washington zeroing in on health 
group, which this was way before Facebook, um, 11 and a half years ago, um, when there was really no such thing as these, you know, communities on there. And he, um, he brought his zero carb eating group of people off of, um, I think it was Jimmy Moore's group, the live in low, low carb um, group and um, made a whole little thing, a community of the, the, the like-minded people that said, hey, this is working for me. And they were, and, and then I came upon it, I guess about maybe six to 12 months into that group being formed. And we're all talking about um, Stanley the Bear Owsley, who's got, a, 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 there's a great PDF free out there online to, to read. And he's been eating in this way for like over 40 years. And then we latched on to, you know, the fat of the land and Stephenson and, you know, we're all trying to make sense of it because there really wasn't um, all the information that's out now. And uh, I, I happened upon it when that first night I was looking at the website, there was um, a, a couple women who were re, uh, recovered uh, bulimics and um, other eating disorders that people were just saying that this totally cured them of and um, that there's been nothing else like it. And I just jumped in the next day. I said, wow, this is powerful. Like, can't imagine that this is potentially really ultimately healthy, but if it cures my addiction, then I'm all for it. So March 9th, 2009, <laughs> I know the day I, I, I jumped in and started eating a, a, a lot of meat. And um, it really has um, changed my life. And still to this day, I give Charles Washington so, so much credit for um, really, I, I'm going to say really leading the way at that point. In, in my mind, I, I didn't find any other groups like us out there. And it just slowly kind of took off in a very gradual, slow way as our own anecdotal journals that were in there were starting to spread. But, you know, then it switched over to Facebook and then different people within the group not agreeing with certain philosophies branching off into their own groups. And it became um, such a... Um, a significant um, force of information that I think it was pretty undeniable. And I, I just find it's incredible for me, like in my 11 year evolution through this to actually um, sort of witness and see the change. And like I said, I, I, I kind of hopped over the whole keto thing and I kind of just um, took a back seat because I was just live in life and I would of course talk to anybody and everybody, some of my patients who I felt could benefit uh, friends and family and I've been coaching all along, um, but I, I just didn't have a presence uh, online um, until I, I just felt the need when I started reading so many people saying, well, this works short term, well, this is great for now, but how healthy is it? And I just felt there needed to be more people who spoke up and said, I don't have scurvy. The vitamin C, you know, hogwash is, you know, here to be debunked. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm 55 and I don't have any health issues whatsoever, no medication and living a very happy, energetic, um, you know, fulfilling kind of way of life with this, you know, wacky <laughs> diet. So, um, so yeah, that that's really my my background as far as that. I I'm I am so um, after after doing this now, just really for the past eight months on Instagram is when I I kind of came into the scene. <laughs> um, I'm so really um, I, I'm I'm so gosh I can't even put it into words, but um, feeling so great with so many people who reach out who have thanked me for you know being there to put myself out there to, you know, discuss what I've been through and my experience of adapting to carnivore and getting through. I mean, there's lots of us out there, but there's just certain things about um, that hits home with people. And um, it, it's, um, I, I just think that it's important for me now and I'm so passionate to try to help as many as I can because I say, if, if I literally, if I could help one person overcome the nightmare that I lived for, you know, I'm going to say um, over 30 years, um, it, it'll all be worth it, all the time and effort that I put into this. Yeah. And I love how, you know, and I'll make sure I link, you have a YouTube channel where you're 
doing recipes and you also have an Instagram profile. If you go live quite a bit, you'll bring people on camera with you. You'll let people ask questions. And I mean, you're doing all this for free, just out of the goodness of your heart to help people. And that just speaks, I think it just speaks volumes about how much this lifestyle has truly helped you and healed you from the inside out. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And for people, you know, I'm somebody who I tried, you know, veganism, and then I went from veganism right into paleo and tried to do paleo for all those years. When I heard you um, talking about how you struggle with the nuts and with the fruit, I was like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what you're saying. Because it was like, as long as the food was allowed, it would, it could still kind of trigger a binge and it could still, even though it wasn't, you weren't going out and having a cheesecake or you weren't going out and having a cupcake, it would still make, for me, it would still make me feel the same way. And then all those nuts and seeds would cause inflammation and bloating and just the pain was, so it, for me, paleo never solved, you know, got me off that food addiction merry-go-round, you know? Yeah. I, and I, I think that, um, for many people who come from, I'll just call it more of the addictive background of it is there's, there's more than just the drug and the food because there's the, the drive somehow to, um, I'll just say squelch down either anxiety or stress or anger or boredom or, you know, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it that we each, you know, reach for instead of doing something like yoga or meditation or exercise or something healthy. But it's, um, it's, it's really, I think, important to really change the relationship with food because it is very easy to overeat on anything. Yeah. And, you know, as much as some in this, uh, circles say that, you know, calories don't matter. I, they, they really do, especially when you come, and I'm just going to call it out as far as coming from a binge eating background or an addictive background, there's just no way around it. The relationship with food is different for somebody like me and you than somebody who's just like, you know, I got inflammation and wow, when I eat this way, I don't feel inflamed. Wow, cool. Let's just keep doing it, you know, um, because and I like to go into also the, the social aspects of it. We are surrounded, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult because we're surrounded by, you know, well-meaning people. Oh, I made this just for you. Or, oh, we're all doing this. And, you know, you're, you're put in situations where it is, um, it's not easy. So you have to get to that point where you understand that it truly is an addictive substance. And, you know, people that I coach, I actually say, you know, start thinking differently. And I, it's so important to keep reading and keep learning and keep informing yourself, whether it's listening, you know, and following people like Ben Bickman or Ivor Cummins or any of these like scientists or physicians that are still just putting out information. And like Joan Iflin, she's like, you know, the foremost, uh, you know, authority on um, food addiction and processed food addiction. And I just think it's so important to really, as you're doing it and feeling better and hopefully healing, but understanding that there really is something to this and that when you look at now around at, instead of looking at that cheesecake on somebody else's plate, you look at it like, oh, that's pretty much like a big syringe of heroin for me. Yeah. And that's just a bad, 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 slippery slope right back into my addiction. And I can make any excuse I want to say, oh, you know, it's awkward or, you know, I'm in this, you know, situation I want to make, you know, Aunt Shirley feel badly or um, I'm with a bunch of friends who are telling me you're crazy, you're going to have a heart attack. Of course, vegetables are healthy. And the next thing you know, you're having some corn chips at the, you know, Mexican restaurant and dipping it in the salsa and having it with guacamole and for some people and I tell people no not everybody has to be restrictive as I am for as long as I am I do it because I choose to because it's just resolved such a huge lifelong problem for me but you know some people might be fine introducing back in avocado and salsa or salads and um, that's for every individual journey to for them to figure out but 
for many, um, and I'm going to say it's, it's even something as simple as what I just described, it can be a slippery slope right back. And, um, and I, th I think the, um, the most important thing, aside from surrounding yourself, um, at the, I'm talking about at the beginning of this with um, information and supportive people like you and, you know, everybody out here who's, who, who really, really wants to help um, is to, at the beginning, don't talk about it. Don't just keep you know, bringing it up because any, especially when you're new to it, you're, you're really not so quick with the, you know, why are vegetables not healthy? potentially not healthy. And you're like, uh, and, and phytochemicals, uh, you know, you don't want to have to be put in that position. Just, yeah. just go about. People don't pay attention to really what's so much on your plate or what you're eating and what you're kicking around with your fork. So um, I just say, be quiet about it. In family situations, everybody wants, you know, it's almost like people don't want you to um, sort of emphasize a bad eating habit that's going on within themselves. And um, I, I, just, I just learned early on that it's, it's, it's so much better just to kind of go about what you're doing and, um, and, and just keep learning so that you will get to the point where like I am, I'm like, I'm so cocky about it. <laughs> like, go ahead, tell me that what I'm doing is not, not, not healthy because I'll say, really, how's your diet doing for you? Because nine times out of 10, they're 20, 30, 40 pounds overweight and they're on medication. So, um, and, and I, I, you know, I've gotten to the point where I have really learned and researched and read for so long and coached that I'm, I, I'm so adamant of the positive benefits that I have and so many have that I then can sort of pick and choose who has a, a true interest in really taking this on as something that they're, they're really potentially can benefit themselves or are they just interested in um, kind of being the devil's advocate on you and yeah. um, just, you know, uh, just making it, it difficult for you to be comfortable in the situation. Yeah, it's, it's definitely tricky. And that's one thing I tell people also is you don't need to convert your friends and family to doing what you're doing. It may not be right for them. It may not be right for everybody, but stay, just do your thing. Just do eat your meat. <laughs> and I love how you talk about that in social situations and, and family gatherings. Most of the time, if you don't make a big deal about what's on your plate, nobody else will, you know, it's, it's learning that we make things such a huge deal everyone else around us really doesn't care unless right. you start making it a big deal. Right. And I, I think that if, if, if you're really like pressured and pushed, let's say it's a, a more, you know, intimate situation where it's, you know, two or three couples or whatever, and you're, or you're with, with just some, some close friends and maybe this is at the beginning of you doing it, um, or you're in a party, um, you know, one of the people said, well, what do you say? Or what can you say to not make it awkward? Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things is just like, you know, um, I, I'm on a special elimination diet right now, trying to figure some things out. And this is working great for me so far. So I, I can't eat that right now. And nobody can deny that. Nobody can like, you know, say, what are you crazy? Of course you can't, you know, nobody's going to pressure you at that right. point because you're, you're telling them, what you're doing and why, and they have no right to, you know, um, negate what you're saying. Um, you know, it's, there, there's always, a, the other thing I say, like somebody, you know, like we'll take this situation with the Aunt Shirley again, coming over, I made your, you know, coconut dream pie, your favorite, and they're coming over you with a piece and you say, oh my God, I am so full. That looks so great. I definitely am, can think about having that later, but right now could not put another bite in my mouth. Yeah. End of story. Then everybody's just talking, laughing, the piece goes to somebody else, and you're done. I mean, I, I think it's important for people to think about those things ahead of time because um, it is easy with your own addictive brain churning in your head, and let's say you're only done this for two weeks or two months, to then go, eh, what's it going to hurt? You know, I'm sure I could just get right back on it tomorrow. And you, it's, it's that addictive brain that's just going to keep making noise. And um, so you have to go into it ahead of time. Um, I tell people bring, you know, if you're going to a situation where it's, you know, a large group, a pool party, whatever, 
offer or just go ahead and bring a whole cheese and salami platter. So you know for sure you've got something that you can eat and nibble on while everybody else is having, you know, whatever. So um, there's really, you know, in, in my mind, always, always a way around it. And it's just a matter of what are your, um, we call them like the NSVs, your non-scale victories. What's going on that's making you feel good? Your, your mood, your inflammation, your arthritis, your acne's going away, your eczema's going away, your blood sugar's getting better, whatever it is that's, that has to start driving you to make really good decisions going forward. Um, there's, there's just no way around it because it's hard. We're always surrounded and, and always will be by, you know, tempting foods. And um, it's, I, I even tell people, because people always ask like, oh, you're so lucky you've done this so long. And I said, well, it's still not easy, you know? Yeah. And part of it is, yeah, it is really easy because all I got to do is wait till I get hungry and I get to eat as much tasty, you know, meat as I want and, and to feel satisfied and that's great. Um, but I'm still in a situation where I'll go to a meeting room full of physicians and it includes the continental breakfast and it's bagels and croissants and muffins and fresh fruit and it's like wow awesome <laughs> right where's my bacon this. and eggs <laughs> right exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah so there's challenges but they're always always you know you, you can overcome them by just having a little foresight i tell people the easiest thing now with the internet anytime somebody invites you to dinner or just last minute with your friends oh we're thinking about going here you just pull up your phone, pull up the menu, and just decide ahead of time what you're going to have. Um, and and if it's a situation where, oh, tomorrow let's all go wherever, I can even call the restaurant ahead of time. I'm going to find out if their chicken wings have any flour or breading on them, or are they completely naked, or do they have sugar in the rub? I don't want to go into that kind of annoying kind of conversation at the table with the waiter. So I will, and you know, obviously now I go to, you know, Places that I've gone over and over, I, that's not a common thing I have to do. But if it is a different place, I have that's the best thing to do. Call ahead, pick out exactly what you're going to order. And if something's questionable, call and just start asking them ahead of time so that you're not in that position where you're drawing attention to yourself sitting at the table. Yeah, I love that. And that's so helpful for people. You know, you really do if you want to do this lifestyle and you want to stay consistent. And I think that consistency is so important that you plan ahead. I've heard you talk about it before on Q and A's where people are like, well, can I just do carnivore like Monday through Friday and then on the weekends kind of go off? Like what yeah, do you- How bad is it? How bad is it to have a cheat meal? And what does that do? I'm like, well, you know what it does? It just totally screws up your keto adaptation, screws yeah. up your insulin, it screws, screws up ketones. And, you know, I just, I just feel that if this is going to be a lifestyle change, then it has to be a lifestyle change. And, you know, <laughs> the, the flip side is go ahead and see where it brings you. It yeah. most likely will bring you right back where you came from, which is why you came here to begin with. So um, again, it's, it's, it's really interesting because everybody's journey is their own. Everybody, you know, and, and some people, like I'll have people say to me, oh, that's great. That, that works for you, you know, it doesn't work for everybody. It's like, well, you know, most people don't give it even 30 days. Right. Um, it certainly doesn't appear to probably anybody in the first 14 days that it's really working. So I think most of us here talk about, you know, giving it 30, 60, 90 days um, to work through all of those initial, you know, cause our bodies, I, I say our bodies for decades have been fed garbage mm -hmm. and, I, I'm, I'm lately been really on a, um, uh, uh, I guess just on a little aside of this whole vegetable oil thing that it's just, it's so prominent in all the foods. I say if it comes in a box, a bag, a bottle or a jar, there's chance, probably 98% chance one of the first three ingredients is some sort of, you know, seed oil, canola oil, palm oil, cottonseed oil. It's just, it's so toxic. And um, I'm, you know, we can only hope, all of us in this community can only hope that at some point this information gets out enough that it actually becomes outlawed, you know, but there's, you know, trillion dollar big conglomerate food industry that's behind not ever letting that information get out. 
mean, who would think that like it, it's actually shown and proven that that, that, that it's actually very indicative of um, diabetes is this seed oil, um, as well as a macular degeneration, something near and dear to my heart, being an eye doctor and my dad has it, um, that it's, you know, if you, if you watch some really, really great physicians, Dr. Chris Kenobi online, he has um, cureamd.org, it's a, a, you know, his website, he left practice to dedicate because he did seven years of research and determined that it's really sugar and processed foods and these seed oils that he feels that nobody should have macular degeneration. It's not age related. If it was, then years and years and years ago, when I first started practice, I hardly saw any. And now 30 years later, so many people. Wow. So um, crazy. Yeah, it's just, well, you I know, like we pathologize so many things like the macular degeneration. And I see you on your Instagram. I mean, you're rocking a bikini at 55 <laughs> and doing like, I saw the thing you did on your birthday uh, with the trapeze. And I was like, oh my Lord, I can't imagine doing that at age 41. Like that kind of <laughs> terrifies me a little bit, but you're like living your life and you're not on medication and you're healthy and and you know we're taught that once you get to 55 or once you get to 40 it's all downhill like yeah everything's gonna tank and you're gonna start having all this degeneration but you know people like you and Kelly and people who've been doing this for a really long time show us that that's not necessarily that doesn't have to be the case you know that you get to enjoy your life and your health um, and by eliminating these foods that it's, it's done nothing but enhance your life. We're so emotionally attached to the processed foods and the sugar. And we think that that's going to bring us some sort of happiness, but you know, in the end, all it does is just completely wreck the body. Yeah. And I think that, um, this, if people, I just, I just can't imagine that, um, that this really isn't truly the optimal correct human diet um, for how many thousands now over and over in the past 11 and a half years that I've been in this have been like literally cured of so many things. Um, you know, I have a, a, a good friend who was um, bipolar and depression and it was three years ago, she was here on the beach with me and we had this discussion. She opened up to me about it and I happened to you know, have enough of a personal relationship with Amber O'Hearn that I said, you know what, I'm going to put you in touch with somebody. Mm. And um, she's been carnivore ever since. And wow. she and her husband just are practically in tears thanking me anytime we get together that I've changed, changed their lives. And um, that it's, it's just remarkable. Um, and I just said, you know, it's, it's a golden ticket. It, it really is. The difficult thing, we're so accultured. Like, you know, I, I had a patient who had bleeding in their eye, diabetic, and I, of course, I, I can't bite my tongue. I just have to go on this little, you know, stint about carbs and, you know, what's your diet like and what are you being told to eat? And, you know, these people are still eating fruit. I go, no, oh, diabetics should not be eating fruit. And they look at me like, really? And then, but I love my fruit. Of course you love your fruit. It's sweet and it's sugar and you have to just inject more insulin and you've got bleeding in your eye. And, um, and then when I go into, yeah, I go, I said for 11, they go, how do you do that? I go, well, for 11 years, I have not eaten pasta or rice. And they're like, or, and I said, or bread. And they're like, but I'm Italian. <laughs> there you go. Well, well, there's an excuse to, you know, keep, keep damaging your body. But I right. said, you know what? I said, it's, you know, and then I, 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 I have made a um, really a, a handout that I give to, um, I have one for diabetics and one for macular degeneration patients. And I, I tell them, go read the diabetes solution um, by Dr. Bernstein. And then I, I also have on their links to um, different YouTube videos, uh, which sort of are leading them to the path of keto carnivore. And, uh, I just, I, I'm so, um, you know, for the amount of time that it takes that I, I put into it and I fall behind in my schedule, my patients still, I mean, they know, I, I get backed up in my schedule, but they all know they get my full undivided, you know, attention once I'm in there with them. And I have patients that come back six months later and um, some of them are just like, 
hug me and just say, you, you know, I'm down 40 pounds and you've changed my life and I'm off my meds. And it's so rewarding. And like, I feel like my outreach just in my, you know, the patients I see day in, day out at, at my practice is one thing, but now I feel like I've got a, a, a bigger audience of people who really truly want to be helped and who want to um, understand and learn this, this, you know, way of eating that is potentially going to um, solve all their problems and lead them to a very, you know, for me, when, when you think about longevity and, and, and life, it's, it's without your health, you have nothing. I mean, I think that's just one of the most profound, you know, statements to think about. Literally, without your health, you have nothing. And so um, the, the fact that I think that truly, and, you know, I'm still waiting to be proven wrong, that this is, this is the way to health for everyone. Um, not that everybody has to do it to be healthy, but the path for people who are, are ill and have tried over and over to, you know, figure it out. Well, here's the answer. Yeah, I love it. And one thing I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, when, when you take all those addictive substances out of your life, and I've talked with this, uh, with Dr. Saiwes about this, just that replacement behaviors, what are some things that you've done over the last 11 years to, you know, because obviously you're, you're missing out on kind of that social aspect and it can be psychologically difficult. What are some things that you've put into your life to help you, um, you know, kind of cope with, with the missing endorphins from sugar or carbs or any of that? Um, it's a great question and a difficult one to answer because I then segue into, um, my, discussion with everybody that I coach because I'm going to say the majority of people uh, come with this addictive to whatever degree background of the sugar and carbs and you know being able to sit and eat a bag of potato chips when you only intended on having a handful you know or having that you know container of Ben and Jerry's calling your name and you're like all right I'm going to have half you put it back and then you just decide, well, I might as well finish it so I don't have to think about it tomorrow. You know, like this, this, this ongoing addiction is horrible. And whatever addiction it is that people are in, um, you have to understand that there's a very cautious side of me that I, I talk to people about, about cross addiction, because I feel like we are escaping to something for a reason. And once we take that away, um, there can be a period of euphoria where you're like, wow, I've got this kicked. I am, I, this is, I'm good to go until the next crisis in life. And I don't yeah. care who you are. Nobody's got this fantasy, amazing, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, no problem life. There's always issues, whether it's work or family or relationships or kids or, Whatever it is, you know, there's always something that is throwing a wrench in it. And I say it's just so important to be cognizant of cross addiction, whether it's exercise. I mean, I, you know, I know people who will go out and run eight miles every day before they go to work. Ooh. Now, to me, I don't know. That's a little bit of an issue. Yeah. And, and the fact that they change things to be able to do that also on the weekend and not, you know, there's, but you know, you could call that a healthy addiction. All right. Healthier than what I was doing, but, um, and then, then, and with alcohol, um, yeah. just really cautious to say to people, like you might've been easily a social drinker before, but be very cautious and think about what you're doing. If you're going to continue having some alcohol that that doesn't become your new crutch. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts of things. There's, you know, I want to say um, exercise for somebody maybe has not exercised. It's so awesome. I tell people just get out and try initially if all, if you haven't exercised at all, do 10 minutes every day, then do 20, then do 30, get yourself that to the point where you're out in nature, you're out in the sunshine. Cause there's so many benefits to that. Try to pick up other things that unbeknownst to you are actually helping in your stress and helping in maybe certain anxiety situations. Um, 
uh, meditation and yoga. You know, there's there's different outlets. But you know, for somebody maybe who's already been in meditation and yoga, but is also an addict, when you give up your you know sugar and carbs, the meditation and yoga was just something that was always there. You probably have to turn to something else. Take up a musical instrument. Um, you know, I find that I probably spend too much time, although it's just maybe more of a, a, a part of who I am, just of just so curious and like a sponge and wanting to soak up more information and um, just keep learning. So I, I end up, I, you know, go down the rabbit hole on way too many things and research and re read and listen and learn. Um, but there's got to be something that you spend your time doing, whereas you used to literally, people don't realize how much time they spent sitting on the couch eating yeah. junk or driving to go get the junk or driving to meet friends to eat more junk. Um, yeah. It's, uh, you know, I, I hate to put it in those terms, but um, there's, I, I, I hope for people that there's that kind of revelation where when you in this long enough and you realize how amazing it is to not have that gnawing thought in your head of when you're going to eat, what you're going to eat and what you want to eat. And just once that goes and you are free to just, you know, take up, you know, take a challenge up, say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to climb a mountain and I'm going to start training for it. Or I'm going to take up weight training because I, I think weight training is a great thing. I think as we age our, our muscle um, mass, you know, diminishes. And the only way around that is to start doing some resistance training. Um, and not that anybody, I had somebody, one of my followers contact me and say, is it a requirement with carnivore um, to do, um, to basically be a gym rat and do this heavy lifting? Because it seems everybody in this community, I don't know whether they're looking at Sean Baker and Paul Saladino and <laughs> you, know, you know, Mark Smelly Bell is on there. You know, he's a big lifter who was yeah. doing some carnivore. And, and so I said, I said, that's the farthest from the truth. I said, you know, what you, what you really want to do is, 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 is get into your new relationship with food and then have so much energy and desire to keep going and make yourself better. I said, it's like peeling back an onion, you know, it's like, you know, I said, the next thing you do, you're tossing out your plastic containers and replacing them all with glass. Cause you know that, you know, all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, I'm not supposed to put hot food in plastic containers. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's estrogenetic. You know, it's, 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 it's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I said, don't even think, I said, when I started this, Charles Washington and, you know, once I was on there and, and coaching others too, we, we started talking and people are so excited to hear, no, you don't have to exercise. Let's say you've got 60, 80, hundred pounds to lose. Don't exercise. Just keep going. Just, you know, if you, you know, all right, go out and maybe see if you can get yourself to go for a walk. That's great. But don't be a slave to the treadmill or a bike or the gym. You got to wait until you get yourself healthy so your body can actually withstand exercise without injuring itself. Yeah. And it's not, you know, you, they say you can't out exercise a bad diet and it's so true. It has, it really doesn't have anything to do with the exercise. It has to do with what you're passing between your lips. Yeah, I agree. And it's, you know, the longer I do this and the more I've kind of optimized, the more energy I have. I mean, I, I go, I've been swimming laps the last few weeks. I've been back in the pool swimming laps. That would exhaust me to have to do it for more than 10 minutes. And I'm going 45 minutes an hour swimming laps every day. I'd lift weights. But when I first started carnivore, I didn't do anything for the first six months. I just, you know, I'd always been very active, but I just kind of made the decision to give my body time to rest and to to just acclimate to the lifestyle, to rest. You know, people think that you have to go out and, um, you know, walk 20,000 steps a day and do all this other stuff in order to adapt to carnivore. But I think it's, and what a lot of the longer term carnivores say, it's like, let your body rest, let yourself have this time and, and don't be so anxious to change your whole life in five minutes. I mean, it just, it's an evolution, you know? Oh yeah, it's that's why I keep telling people. I said, "Welcome to your journey to optimal health," because it is a journey, and it's you know week by week, month by month, and then hopefully year by year if you're getting all the positive benefits. And I say, you know what? If things aren't going exactly as you like, there's there's ways to tweak things. But initially, you got to get at least 
you know, I always like to say six to 12 months under your belt, just get yourself into the mindset that this is the healthiest way to eat that other stuff you were eating, even just looking at a slice of pizza. That's one of the things people are just like, God, don't you miss pizza? Oh yeah, of course it was delicious. It was right. good. I remember it, but no, God, do I not want to put flour in my body? Like that would be, you know, probably pain, probably bloating. Um, and even if none of that, you know, just, just the fact that it's, yeah, it's just another, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the addiction. So no need for it. Yeah, that's, yeah. And that's so funny. I mean, the thing that I hear from you and a lot of the other longer term carnivores is just this feeling of freedom, which I feel like that's what people really want is they don't want to be chained to like you were saying, going out to get food and spending all the time eating food and thinking about what they're going to eat next. It's just such a mental prison for people. And, you know, you're not saying, Oh, just do this and everything's going to get better right away. It's like a long process and you kind of have to rebuild your life. But for you doing this long term, it sounds like you, you have after 11 years kind of gotten to that place where your whole life doesn't revolve around your next meal. You know? Right. It's almost, it's almost fun now just to, um, that's why I, I've been enjoying doing um, my uh, cooking demonstrations on YouTube because I like to show people that, um, number one, everything I do is really simple and easy because I'm not about like hanging out and like going through a whole recipe and dividing stuff. And, you know, like my stuff you can make literally with pretty much within five to 15 minutes. Um, but it's fun to be creative and say, you know what, I don't have to just eat a steak or ground beef every day and say, oh God, I'm bored. There's just so much you can do. Um, and also ways of incorporating, I know you do too with the, um, with those egg muffins. I have this baby muffin that I love. I, I, sometimes I call it the kitchen sink muffin because I can have like leftover smoked brisket in my refrigerator and maybe a couple leftover grilled bratwurst and I'll throw, add in some bacon and I just chop this stuff and mix it in with the base recipe. And every time I make it, it's different and it's so yeah. delicious and so easy. And, um, and, and it's a way of incorporating, like I, I just had um, a little uh, a, a girl's night uh, sleepover with three girlfriends here at my place. And, um, you know, I knew in the morning, I'm thinking, and none of them are carnivore whatsoever. Um, two of them, you know, a bit overweight and started questioning me and asking me because, you know, they're my age or a little younger. And, um, and this is, they, this is the second time I've met them a year ago because they're close friends of, of a good friend of mine. And in the morning I was like, you know, I, I didn't even think twice about whether I was going to go out and buy bread for them to have toast or bagels, nothing like that. I was making meaty muffins and bacon knots and boy, did they love that, you know, like who doesn't love that? So yeah. you can, you know, accommodate, you know, I don't have to feel like I need to have, you know, hash browns or, yeah. you know, anything with, with the breakfast that I serve. And it was, you know, everybody enjoyed it. So, um, and also didn't feel like I needed to buy fruit to have, you know, a, you know, like a big spread. Everybody, I mean, you eat these things and you're totally satisfied. You eat a bunch of bacon and these meaty muffins, you don't need anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just recently went away with my sisters and they're definitely not carnivore or keto or anything. And I made the egg muffins and made bacon. I made them a big breakfast and they were totally fine. I mean, <laughs> didn't it didn't wasn't an issue at all. They enjoyed it. It's very satisfying, and um, we were able to go hiking and been a long time without even worrying about food we had that nice satisfying breakfast and you just live your life <laughs> yeah yeah and then in, in um, answer also to what you said about how it's just so freeing and when you get to that point where you really do realize like you know for a while you're there like god is this real like I gotta do this the rest of my life am I gonna do this like you you you, you start really thinking about that and it's a little overwhelming. I tell people, don't think about that. You know, it's like, yeah, you take it one day at a time. But when you get to that point where you realize you like how fabulous you feel and you're healthy, you know, I mean, yeah, I have to admit, I'm really proud of the fact that I can, you know, do cartwheels on the beach in a bikini at 55 and not look at the beach. I have, I have, I have a lot of my patients, most of my patients are, you know, like, 
over 70 anyway, but they, they sometimes quite, they go, are you old enough to be a doctor? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah my kids are 21 and 22 and I've been in practice for 30 years. I'm like, wow. but yeah, it makes you feel really good and really healthy and that you feel like you can just tackle anything you set your mind to. I said, you know, whatever, like take up kayaking, take up, you know, it's so interesting that your mindset so changes and it's just, you know, the world is your oyster kind of feeling. And it's just, it's, it's just so great. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm like, I, 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 there was a point, I think I was maybe two years into carnivore and I literally felt like getting on the roof and shouting it from the rooftops, you know, like, like, why doesn't everybody know about this? Like, yeah. this is just hard to believe that I have so many patients that will sit there and they're like, Oh, don't get old. You know, like, like that. It's just, yeah. a, it's, it, it's the norm to have arthritis and gout and, you know, diabetes and high blood pressure and on thyroid meds, you know, like, it's just like people act like they understand, like they truly have internalized and understand that this is what happens when you get old and that this is normal and that they just keep listening to the doctor and taking their medication to adjust this or adjust that. And, you know, it's, it's so, it's so disheartening that our um, media has us so brainwashed that we have to eat lots of fruits and vegetables and lean, you know, meat and fish and, you know, go meatless. And um, I actually had a, a patient who had pretty significant eye inflammation. There's a condition called meibomianitis and blepharitis. It's all like eyelid inflammation, like big time that people can get recurrent styes and just be just miserable. And this, this one guy was, he's 29 years old and he was in now, I it was my first time seeing him. But when I look back in his charts, we have six physicians in my practice, you know, how many times he's been. And I look at the diagnosis, Shalazian, Shalazian, you know, sty and this and that. And I'm like, wow. I said, there's something really going on here. He's like, yeah, he goes, I need to find out what to do because this is ridiculous. And I said, so of course my first thing is, what's your diet like? Right. Oh, he's vegetarian. Mm. Oh, kidoki. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about this. Yeah. So I'm really curious because I, I sent him away with, and he said, you know, because I've really been thinking there's been other issues happening. I've really been thinking about adding in some meat. And I said, all righty. And I wrote down like different things and I had to follow a carnivore doctor on Instagram. Yeah. And I said, look, I said, seriously, I said, I, I, I'm like, I'm going to tell you with probably 98% certainty that if, if, if you just, if you decide that you really want to do something about this, that you can literally cure yourself of this. I've seen it happen. And, um, so I'm really curious what's going to happen in six months at his follow-up visit. So huh. yeah, yeah we'll see. maybe he'll be another uh, vegetarian convert. <laughs> yeah. You never know. I mean, <laughs> you never know. I hope <laughs> all we can do is just keep on spreading this, you know, our stories and that's, it's been yeah. so powerful to talk with you today. I know so many people are going to watch this and it's going to help them and encourage them along the way that, you know, like you said, it's just one day at a time. All we have is today. All we have is right now. And we don't have to worry about five years from now or, you know, we, I think what happens with a lot of people is that they're like, Oh, what about at XYZ's wedding? And it's like, well, XYZ is not even engaged. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why are you making this a thing? And <laughs> and there's there's ways around weddings. I mean, yeah. they'll serve like a little filet, a little salmon, or a little chicken, whatever your choice is, you know. But I tell people, you can always go home and eat more. You can yeah. eat before you go there. Before you go, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not uh, or, about the food. It's about the people. You know, yeah. It's about not that, that experience. Not that difficult. Hopefully, they have a carving station at a buffet. That's the best. Yeah, absolutely. We had one at our wedding. <laughs> uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. so I'm going to put all of your links below this video, your YouTube and your Instagram. But is there any other way people can find you or work with you right now? Um, no, Instagram is probably the best way. I actually have Carnivore Doctor um, on Facebook, but it's really there to, I, it just, you know, whatever I'm posting on Instagram, I have it duly go over there. So I'm not really so active on Facebook. And I know it's, 
I know I should probably change that because I know some people are just Facebook people and they're like, I don't know what that Instagram stuff is, but I personally was always just kind of lurking in on Facebook and I was in my forums over there, you know, the zeroing on health, zero carb health, Dana Spencer's group, which is great. Um, and I actually send a lot of people like anybody I'm coaching. I said, you, you've got certain requirements, if, you know, you're going to keep working with me. I find that it does not work. If you just go into your own world, I hate to say that social media is the, the important link to this, but it's so helpful. It's so instrumental. You know, I tell them, I want you to join these groups. And I want you to read with other people that are in your same boat, trying to lose weight, trying to get off meds, trying to acclimate to this weird, freaky <laughs> meat eating yeah. thing. Yeah. Understand that all these people are in here with you doing the same thing. You're not out there in your little town, in your little job, in your little office with everybody bringing, you know, all this garbage in and then, you know, you're not the only one doing it and you're doing this for a specific reason, but you need to have the support. And um, I just think it's so important because it's so easy, especially with, I'll go back to it again, this addictive nature that we have with this stuff. It's so easy to convince yourself that oh, I don't have the willpower. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, just this once. And it's, it's so important. It's because you can do it. You can change your life around. Um, and you can live a very healthy, happy, productive um, life doing whatever it is you want to do. I mean, I'm planning on hopefully next um, summer going to uh, Switzerland and maybe uh, doing some major mountain climbing just because Ooh. it's sort of on the bucket list. So why not? Or go over to California and Yosemite and climb Half Dome. So It'll be on my Instagram when I do, so. Yay. <laughs> and after seeing your birthday from this summer with the trapeze, you guys got to go check that out, that I, I don't doubt you for one second that you Yeah, yeah. If you, if you scroll down in my, in my um, post, I think the first picture might actually be a, a picture of me because it's one of those second ones. Because I was when I was getting trolled by um, some vegans about how unhealthy I look and how I must not have any energy because I don't eat carbs. And so I said, yeah, in your face. This was, you know, a year ago at Club Med and I was asked to be in the trapeze show and yeah. here I am releasing and catching, being caught yeah. by this, this guy. And it was just so fun. So I just felt like I, I have that little um, feistiness in me to, to yeah. uh, just kind of talk back, especially, you know, I'm here just, I'm not selling anything. I'm not... Right. I really, you know, uh, I, I really just truly genuinely am so passionate to get all that misinformation erased from people's minds and to understand and learn what is really potentially out there for them. So, yeah, it's coming from a place of wanting to help. You're not selling anything at all. And I think people attack when they're threatened, you know, they've spent, all their life and all their time and energy dedicating themselves to a vegan diet and they probably don't feel good. I mean, I can say that as somebody who did vegan for two years, I didn't feel good. And so number one, you don't feel good. And number two, you kind of realize maybe I'm not doing the right thing. And so they attack and it's, it's unfortunate that somebody like you who just wants to help has to be on the receiving end of that. But yeah. And I'm fine. I'm fine with vegetarians other than, like I said, that vegetarian patient sitting in my chair with extensive inflammation. And in my experience, and I told him, I said, this is in my experience, I'm going to tell you what I believe is really going to help you. But if, you know, any other, I have friends that are vegetarian. I don't, I don't yeah. comment. I, you know, it's, yeah. it's, everybody's on their own journey and I'm not there to judge. Um, but just don't, 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 don't start bad mouthing me because I right. eat only meat. That's, right. that's where I, 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 I take offense to it. So, yeah. um, but yeah, it's all, it's, it's all good. I feel like, um, we're, the, 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 this movement has just been so great. Um, the way it's, it's going and now Sean Baker's doing that study. So I yes. hope people are, you know, willing to even chip in five bucks to his GoFundMe because it's so important to get, even for ourselves to have this study done to say, wow, yeah, I've kind of proven it to myself in 11 years that this is healthy, but it is great seeing that information so that when I go to speak to others or try to spread the word, there's, there's a little more um, oomph behind it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel like it's enough that I'm in the medical profession and I've done it as long as I have 
Um, but there's still something to be said. Everybody wants to see the study. And I keep, I've told people in the past, I said, who's funding the study? There's no pharmaceutical company that is going to profit from this. There's no food company who's making a processed food that's going to profit from this. So I said, that's why we're not seeing those studies. So it's like, well, you know, of course, if this was healthy, everybody would know about it, right? Well, it's, there's a big movement right here on, on social media that's yeah. making it, it known. So um, hopefully, hopefully with, you know, you continue doing interviews like this and, you know, we're, we're out here and we're, we're just trying to get the message out that anybody who needs help or wants help or information about doing this or transitioning to this, it's just, it's, it's here. And yeah, yeah we're, we're all here to help. 100%. I love it. Well, thanks again so much for coming on. And yeah, I was great being on and thanks for having me. And um, yeah, I'll give you the information for if anybody wants to get in touch. Uh, basically, like I said, um, Instagram, Carnivore Doctor. Um, if I, I'm really, really pretty darn good about answering every people. Some people actually make a comment. She answers questions like people write that in my thing. Like they'll tag somebody, their friend and say she actually answers back. <laughs> I love so. it. Yeah, really just appreciate just, it. Yeah, just DM me and um, I, I'll be happy to do whatever I can. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Lisa. It's All right, Sarah. My pleasure. It was good talking with you. All right. All right. Bye.